rainy day tasks today is to update my PWM controller. So to give you an example, of, it's only drawing 1.7 amps to be cloudy today at 14 volts, so only 24 watts, and it's actually a 300 watt panel. So I'm curious to see if I swap it over to my Victron MPPT controller that I bought for the house, which I've now replaced with a 30 amp unit, how much current we can actually get going into the battery in the shack. That's today's little project. Mm. A bit crappy outside, so good indoor job. My biggest issue with this controller is you don't really know what it's doing, whether it's in bulk charge mode or float mode or or where in the charge cycle it is and how full the battery actually is. So I'll isolate the panel, pull this one out and replace it with the, the MPPT Victron. I'm gonna have to uh, do something about my USB connectors because I won't have that on the Victron. Oh, well, got one there, another one down below, so should be all right. Thank you. Fuse back in the battery, which is outside, because it's a standard lead acid. Thirteen point two nine volts, whereas the other one said it was at thirteen point nine or something ridiculous. So this will be a much improved system. Now you've got your true indication of what the battery voltage is, finally. Okay, turn on the controller. Solar panel on. Twenty volts, starting to ramp up now. Aussie attack. So whilst the old controller was probably doing about as good as it could do, given the current conditions, the new one's still only giving, you know, 20 watts. 
very cloudy and I think the sun's still behind trees but at least now you know it's in bulk charge mode. <clears throat> I'm getting a little bit more current than we would normally have got with the PWM. It'll be interesting to see how much more we get when the sun's out. And as always, little Miss Patient is waiting for me to come back outside. <laughs> She's hopeless. So it's in partial sun at the moment, but it's fully charged and in float mode. So I will put on some load, put on some lights, turn everything on, get the telly going. Little 12 volt telly. Mute that, nothing's ever good on the news. More lights. Get uh, a little inverter going here, get some more lights off that. It's the, uh, <laughs> the outdoor lights that my daughters gave me as a present for my birthday. So now we've got 4.2 amps running at 56 watts. So this panels, I just looked it up, it was I think it was 22 volts and 13 amps to give you 300 watts. back and have a look again once the battery's drained and it goes back into bulk mode. We now have the solar panel fully in the sun and I've run the battery down so that it can get a full charge going on. And we're getting 130 odd watts which is the most I've ever seen come into this panel which is nice. Clouds are just sort of coming over a little bit, so it's dropped off a bit, but I was beginning to wonder about this panel. It's supposed to be 300 watts, and I've never seen it do more than about 30, so this is good news. I must say, I really like these Victron controllers. This isn't the one in the shed that I've just installed, but this is the one I've installed on the house. I've got four panels on the roof. It's a very cloudy day today, and they're still pumping out 400 watts. And uh, the maximum they can do is actually 430 because of what the controller can only do 30 amps. So what I really like about this controller is you get this history of charging cycle. So basically that's how many kilowatts it's, it's uh, put into the batteries each day. The modes it's been through for the day, so bulk mode for that much time then into absorption for two hours, then into float for two hours, 35 minutes. So bulk, eight hours, 32 to fully charge them. So it gives you a good idea of how much load you can put on your batteries with a 24-7 load. So I've got the, the house fridge on this. And as you can see here, I added a bit of load, extra load. I put the internet modem on it. And so it never actually completely charge the batteries during that period it was it's been very cloudy and rainy here lately so then I pulled the the internet modem off about here and it got back into a fully charged cycle you can go back here that's probably basically where I put the internet modem on with a bit of extra load shows you the maximum wattage per day what volts it got up to yeah, it's very informative. I really like it. So anyway, I would highly recommend these controllers if you've got a little off-grid system. They're quite nice. Hey, big boy. One 
over by the bank. Probably won't be able to see him on the camera.